Our today's lesson will be based on the simple pendulum. At the end of the lesson, students should be able to understand, firstly, what is a simple pendulum, secondly, scientific terms and concepts related to simple pendulum. The simple pendulum consists of a small but heavy object known as the bob tied to a light string. The light string is normally a thread. The simple pendulum is probably the simplest scientific instrument found in the physics laboratory. But this simplicity must not mislead us. The simple pendulum is studied in physics from grade 7 to grade 13. Simple pendulum is also studied at the university. It is worth noting that the simple pendulum is at the origin of one of the most important inventions of all times, namely the pendulum clock. This invention was started by the well-known scientist Galileo Galilei. It was completed by an equally famous scientist, Christian Huygens, in 1656. Thanks to this invention, people have been able to measure time accurately. This video shows a pendulum clock of the type invented by Christian Huygens. This invention, in fact, is the birth of the accurate clock. We can clearly see the simple pendulum in action. The simple pendulum is mounted onto a retort stand. The end of the thread is fixed into the clamps using a cork or two wooden blocks. The bob is free to oscillate or swing from left to right and back to left several times. This diagram shows the actual setup of the simple pendulum in the laboratory. We see the retort stand. We also see the bob tied to a red thread and suspended using two blocks of wood. Instead of wooden blocks, a cork cut in the middle can also be used. The length of the simple pendulum is the length from the point of suspension to the center of the bob. This length is usually measured using a meter rule or half meter rule. The length is denoted using the small letter L. To make a simple pendulum oscillate, 
we displace the bob through a small angle and release. The bob will move repeatedly from left to right and back to left. The simple pendulum is said to oscillate. This video shows the bob displaced to the left and released. We see the pendulum oscillate. One oscillation of the pendulum is a to and fro motion of the pendulum. If we start observing when the bob is at A, then one oscillation is the movement of the bob from A to C and then back to A. If we start observing when the bob is at B, then one oscillation is the movement of the bob from B to C, then to A, and finally back to B. In other words, we start at B and end at B. The bob starts from rest at point A. As it moves downwards, it gathers speed. At point B, Known as the center or mean position, the bob moves with maximum speed. As the bob moves upwards from B towards C, the speed decreases and becomes zero at C. Because the bob moves fastest at the mean position, that is position B, we start counting oscillations at this point. When we time oscillations in a physics practical class, we start and stop timing at the mean position. This gives us an accurate value for the time. Obviously, we do not time only one oscillation. We time at least 10 oscillations. The period of a simple pendulum is the time taken to complete one oscillation. That is, it is the time taken for the bob to move from A to C and back to A. Period is denoted by capital letter T. The SI unit of period is second S. One oscillation is a to and fro movement of the pendulum. The period of a simple pendulum is the time taken for one oscillation. <clears throat> Friends, in this video, we have learned the simple pendulum. We learned how to set up the pendulum in the laboratory and make it oscillate. We learned how to measure the length of the pendulum. We learned what is one oscillation of a simple pendulum. Finally, we learned what is the period of a simple pendulum. We hope you have enjoyed this video.